In this video lecture, we will see at the ECG changes in electrolyte disbalance. Such kind of question has been asked both in theory as well as as image based questions. Let's look at one of the questions asked in EC on ECG this year. Diagnose the underlying condition due to electrolyte disbalance. So uh, if we see and since we have to focus only on the electrolyte changes, one of the a very characteristic changes in the rhythm strip. This is lead number two, the rhythm strip. We see bizarre shaped QRS complex. It appears as if the P wave, the QRS complex and the T wave, everything is getting merged. So we have uh, bizarre shaped QRS complexes. I mean the P wave is getting merged with the QRS complexes. The second characteristic change. So you see in lead two, the rhythm strip, you can see such changes. Even in lead three, you can see that changes. Second characteristic is this T wave. I mean, this is QRS complex. This is T wave. Okay, so P QRS. So if you see, there is a peaked T wave. Characteristic peak T wave can be seen. Both these, you know, point towards a diagnosis of hyperkalemia. Moving forward, let's look hyperkalemia in further detail. Hyperkalemia can be, you know, if you see the values greater than. Uh, 5.5 is mild, greater than 6 is moderate, and greater than 7 is severe. Greater than 9 invariably leads to death due to asystole and ventricular fibrillation. So the characteristic changes would be broad, bizarre QRS complexes so as already shown here. It seems as if the P wave and the subsequent T wave is merging with the QRS complex. The second characteristic change would be peak T wave. Peak T wave, this is peak T wave usually the earliest sign so peak t wave is usually the earliest sign in cases of hyperkalemia and finally pr interval now pr interval cannot be you know seen in this very characteristically but in certain early cases you can see a prolongation of pr interval moving forward let's look at this question a 61 year old woman presents to emergency department with diarrhea and vomiting. She has recently been started on furosemide by her GP for hypertension. What what happened? So, in this case, obviously we have a strong, you know, uh, clinical history which uh, pushes us to a diagnosis of hypokalemia. Hypokalemia, but does the ECG changes corroborate? So one thing which we see is the T wave flattening or inversion. Right, I know in the precordial leads, if you see, there is an inversion of uh, T wave flattening or inversion. This is there is a bradycardia, okay, and also if you see, uh, that's the major change which you can see uh, appreciate in this particular ECG. So both these changes, where there is a T wave, uh, you know, flattening in inversion or inversion. Also, if you see the P waves, I mean, this is the rhythm strip. If you see rhythm strip, this is the P wave. Okay, this is the T wave. This is the P wave. It is also very flattened and broad, right? Flattened and broad. So, if you can appreciate, it's very broad P wave. Okay, so both these changes and the clinical history will point towards a diagnosis of hypokalemia. Let's look the ECG changes in hypokalemia in a little further detail. Now, this is the characteristic. The classification is less than 3.5, uh, less than 3 and less than 2.5, mild, moderate and severe. If we come to the ECG changes, the most characteristic and not very, you know, uh, it's not a very uh, pathognomic, but characteristic would be T wave flattening and inversion, ST segment depression. So obviously it looks like ST segment depression and prominent u -verse. Since there is a bradycardia, so in Precordial waves, you can find a U wave. So, this is the U wave you can see T wave inversion, slight U wave, then P wave. And finally, you can have an imp increased amplitude and width of P wave and prolongation of PR interval. So, this is the P wave. Clearly, the PR interval is increased. So, T, uh, this is the Q, this is the P. So, now once you have an eye, once you look at various X rays, you will be very easy to identify these changes uh, most characteristic is there is a flattening or inversion of t wave that is the most characteristic change let's move at another question which was asked from the following option in which condition the peculiarity marked as by an arrow in ecg is not seen so 
so what is the peculiarity mark so this is the so there is a what it is marked is basically st elevation clear st elevation uh, st elevation is not seen in hypokalemia in fact uh, there is a st depression or you know flattening of t wave so this both is not seen so answer would be hypokalemia this was actually asked in the exam let's move to another question in which condition the abnormal type of ecg is seen now let's look at the ecg again you can see the qrs complex you know very the second part of the first is normal and the second part there is a notching notching of the j point or also called called as osborn waves so osborn waves there is a separate small video but basically the j point j point is the point uh, where isoelectric point when qrs complex is comes back so that g, g point if it is elevation it's also called as osborn waves now such kind of osborn waves are very characteristically seen in hypercalcemia so we see there is a, also if you see the t wave and the qt interval is reduced this is qt interval it's also reduced so these two features more characteristically the raising of the j point or the osborn wave points towards the diagnosis of hypercalcemia so hypercalcemia the major changes we will see is bizarre looking qrs complexes and very short qt interval so this is the q qt interval would be you know starting from here the start of the qrs complex till end of t so this typically should be around less than 9 but in this case it is almost only 5 or 6 You know, one large small, one large square, and a little beyond it. So six small square. So definitely there is a short QT interval, and finally, and the most characteristic would be J waves or notching of the terminal QRS with CD lead one, V one. So these are the changes in hypercalcemia. Let's look at another ECG which was asked. So out of following, which of the following is a definite ECG change that can be seen in hypomagnesemia with severe chest pain? So this was the ECG which was shown, and again, if you see uh, the most characteristic, I mean, the QRS complex looks normal, the P wave looks normal, but if you see the T wave is very far, QRS complex T, so the QT interval is clearly increased. You know, it can be best appreciated in the rhythm strip. So P QRS and then T, P QRS then T. So QT interval is definitely prolonged in this. and such kind of qt uh, prolongation is also characteristic of hypomagnesemia so these were the question asked uh, hypomagnesemia if we see normal serum magnesium is 0.8 to 1.0 hypomagnesemia is less than 0.8 and the primary ecg which you see change you see is prolonged qt interval again this was a question asked prolonged qt interval has been asked so many times that you are required to learn all the causes of prolonged qt interval by heart so i've just listed some the drugs list you can see in the notes finally a summary of all the changes in the ecg hyperkalemia the typical would be peak t wave which is also the earliest sign bizarre fused qrs complexes as if the p and the t wave is you know kind of combining and prolonged pr if we see hypokalemia t wave inversion or flattening so here there is a p peak t wave here there is a t wave inversion or flattening prominent uh, p wave not very uh, and u waves in precordial leads so the main differentiator between hyperkalemia and hypokalemia would be hypokalemia it's a t wave inversion or flattening hyperkalemia it's a peak t wave with a bizarre qrs complexes hypercalcemia again the characteristic would be short qt and osborn or j wave and hypomagnesemia the characteristic would be prolonged qt interval so there they can be many more questions on the electrolyte changes in ecg hope you have understood thank you